All right, we're on to diagram four. Now, the diagram four is giving you a different perspective of the seasons. Frequently, when you look at this diagram, it's actually a little bit over-exaggerated. Earth's orbit is not perfectly circular. The shape of the orbit, when you look at an orbit, an orbit is an ellipse. But even this diagram over-exaggerates how, you know, far from being circular it is. The term they use is eccentricity, and Earth's orbit is really only slightly eccentric. Now, this also indicates that besides the seasonal dates, which are on here, they're showing you aphelion and perihelion. Okay, those actually are the two points when we're closest and furthest in the orbit. And the numbers for the distances are here. At one point when we're closest in the orbit, that's 148 million kilometers away. Okay, that point when you're closer is actually what's called perihelion. So perihelion is the closest approach in our orbit. Okay, you'd have the highest velocity if you're at perihelion. At point A, where it's indicating it's the slowest velocity, and you see that it's the longest distance, that would be aphelion. Now, what's a little, you know, off or doesn't fit with most people's models is the dates of aphelion and perihelion have nothing to do with the seasons. In fact, in the northern hemisphere, when we are at perihelion, okay, we're closer to the sun, is actually in our winter months. So perihelion becomes comes slightly after this our winter solstice. So perihelion here is on or around January 3rd each year. We would see the sun just ever so slightly larger. The apparent diameter would look a little bigger. But perihelion is in the winter months in the northern hemisphere. Now, aphelion, when we're most distant from the sun, is actually in our summer months. Okay, this one is sort of easy to remember because aphelion is around the 4th of July. We said perihelion is slightly before the winter solstice, so point C here must be the winter solstice. That's going to be 1221. Okay, aphelion is slightly after the summer solstice, so point F is going to be 621. They drew arrows on the orbit, but you should know it. In our solar system, the planets are going to be orbiting counterclockwise when you look down on the solar system from the top. So because planets orbit, and that motion is known as revolution, the revolution of the planets is counterclockwise around the sun. From 621, which is the summer solstice, after summer you would get 923, you would get the autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere to 1221, and then this point back here would be 321, the spring or vernal equinox. So label the special date for each letter. Okay, letter A is around July 4th, but I would call that aphelion. Letter B, we already did, is September 23rd, but that would be, at least for us, the fall equinox. C is going to be December 21st. That would be our winter solstice. Okay. D is right around January 3rd, but that's perihelion. We'd be having our highest orbital velocity at that point. E is March 21st. March 21st is going to be the spring equinox, and F would be June 21st, which is the summer solstice. Now, which letter would the Sun have its largest apparent diameter? 
the apparent diameter is not the real size, that's the size that you see it. So obviously if you're closer you see something larger, so you would expect that to be D. At which letter would the gravitational attraction be the greatest? Well, when I have objects, if I have two objects and those objects are closer together, you get a stronger force of gravity. If you take those same two objects and you spread them farther apart, let's say you double the distance, when you have them farther apart, you're getting less gravitational force. So the strongest gravity would be when they're closest together, and honestly, that would also be at point D or when you're at perihelion. We've got four more questions to deal with this diagram. Where would be moving fastest? Okay, obviously, where you have the strongest pull is D, so that's where you'd be moving fastest. Where would the velocity be the least? Well, give me a break. It's labeled on the diagram. So the slowest velocity is at A. At which two letters will day and night be equal on Earth? All right. Equal night means equinox. So when you're looking at this, point B, which is the autumnal equinox, and E, which is the vernal equinox, would be the points where you have exactly the same number of daylight hours no matter what. Now, you should know that equinox translates to equal night. You may have asked, what does the word solstice mean? Well, one description or, you know, one translation of the word solstice, sol means sun, and you can refer to the solstice as the sun stop. It's the day when the sun hits the highest altitude and then it stops and it begins moving down for the next six months. Or it's the day when the sun hits the lowest altitude and then it stops. For six months the sun gets higher and sunrise moves north. But on the summer solstice it stops. The next day it would begin to move south. Okay, If you were looking at the position of sunrise or the position of sunset. So equinox means equal night, solstice means sun stop, and that was diagram number four.